All right, we're going to finish up Unit 2, and we're going to first go over writing formulas from names. So, ammonium phosphate. This is ammonium. This is phosphate. And you know your polyatomic ion so well. So you do the cross and the drop. Oops. Parentheses here. So NH4 parentheses PO4. And you don't need a parentheses around PO4 because only one is required. All right, iron 2 oxide, um, Fe plus 2, um, O minus 2, so it would be FeO, iron 3 oxide, be Fe2O3, lead 4 oxide, Pb plus 4, O minus 2, would be Pb2O4, which would simplify to PbO2. Calcium chloride, Ca2 plus, Cl minus, and it doesn't matter which way you write the numbers, um, just as long as you have the right charge. So that comes out to CaCl2. Potassium nitrate, K plus, NO3 minus, so that's KNO3. Magnesium hydroxide, so Mg parentheses, OH2. Aluminum sulfate, All right, copper 2 sulfate. <clears throat> That's just 1 to 1, CuSO4. Again, no parentheses are required because only one polyatomic ion is used. All right, lead 4 dichromate, so Pb plus 4, Cr2O7 minus 2. So it's Pb2, Cr2O7, 4. And then this simplifies down to PbCr2O7 parentheses 2. All right, sodium bicarbonate, that's baking soda. So Na plus HCl3 minus, so it's NaHCl3. So if you look at a box of baking soda, it will have this listed as the active ingredient or sodium bicarbonate. Um, zinc nitrate. So you get ZnNO32. Aluminum sulfite. There you go. So practice, practice, practice. Tons of practice problems with nomenclature. So now we're going to work on naming molecular compounds. Molecular compounds are non-metal to non-metal. So you're looking at the right side of the periodic table. Um, so molecular formulas are written with a less electronegative element first. We use prefixes here. So you have to be very careful switching back between ionic nomenclature, which we just saw here, versus molecular nomenclature. So what inevitably happens is students will say, oh, well, this is the one where I get to use prefixes. Usually students like um, naming covalent compounds better. It's a lot easier than ionic compounds. But I caution you. Watch, I'll show you what happens. So this is carbon tetrachloride. And then students will get something like this. Um, they'll get PbO2. And they'll say lead dioxide is incorrect. That is incorrect. This is lead for oxide, and if you're not sure where I got lead for, see the previous page, page 18. 
Um, so I warn you. So one of the things I always encourage students to do when they're working on nomenclature problems, because on the exam in Chem 100 and the exams in Chem 1 and in Chem 122, um, ionic nomenclature will be mixed in with covalent nomenclature. And so one of the things I tell students to do is to always kind of classify it before you name it. So carbon's a nonmetal, chlorine's a nonmetal. Okay, well, let's, you can use these prefixes. All right, lead is a transition metal. Oxygen is a nonmetal. So this is metal to nonmetal. That's ionic. So nonmetal to nonmetal, covalent. Okay, so let me give you these prefixes. I know you were just sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for them. One is mono. Um, this mono is typically used when you have one of the second element, and it's not always used. So it's kind of, I'm okay if it's not used. Um, but you see it with like carbon monoxide. Okay. But not monocarbon monoxide. It's just carbon monoxide. All right, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is deca. Okay. So let's name some covalent compounds. Um, so here's a good time to hit pause um, and work through these. I'll go through the first two and then you can hit pause and work through them. So the first one is carbon dioxide. And so you name the first element as it is and the second element you add IDE. So just like we did with the ionic nomenclature. So this is carbon dioxide. Now another thing that students can get caught up in is thinking they need to do the cross and raise with the covalent compounds and so sometimes they'll say dicarbon monoxide and that's incorrect. So when you're using these prefixes you um, this subscript stays with that you know so that if you have two you're going to use dye. Sorry, my highlighter doesn't show up very well here. Um, okay, the next one is carbon monoxide. And then sulfur. I have two oxygens, so sulfur dioxide. And then sulfur trioxide. And then dye nitrogen. Hmm. oxide. I was thinking dinitrogen pentoxide, which we see a lot too, but it's just dinitrogen oxide. Now you can stop, and hit pause, work through these, and I'll just continue going on over these. Um, this next one, nitrogen monoxide, dinitrogen trioxide, Nitrogen dioxide, dinitrogen tetroxide. Now, notice with this one, the prefix is tetra and you're adding it to oxide. So, tetra plus oxide gives you this weird vowel vowel deal. So what you do is you eliminate the first vowel. If you ever have a situation develop where you have two vowels. Um, the other thing I want to point out about number nine is that it's very easy to want to simplify these because you have just come out of ionic nomenclature and um, you're thinking, oh, this can be divided by two. It should really be NO2. You do not simplify with covalent compounds. You leave them as is. So be careful with that. All right, number 10, dinitrogen pentoxide. Again, it would be pentaoxide, but we took off the A because it was to make it less awkward. 
11 phosphorus trichloride. I used to use this a lot in graduate school. I'm very stinky <laughs> and smoky. Um, all right, number 12 carbon tetrachloride. This chemical was not in use when I was in graduate school because it is a teratogen can cause a lot of different weird cancers, but it was used for some time and in labs. And, um, you know, my advisor who was older would always say, oh, we used to use carbon tet all the time. There's nothing wrong with you. You don't have to wear gloves. You don't have to use hoods. Um, but yeah, the weird cancers would develop among his classmates and everything. So, but that's not going to be on the test. Just kind of interesting. Um, 13, phosphorus tribromide. Okay, moving on. Now, on the exam, you are going to have ionic and covalent nomenclature mixed together. So it's really important that you get a firm foundation in practicing these over and over and over again. I am not going to say name these ionic compounds. I'm not going to say name these covalent compounds. They're going to all be jumbled together. And that is what is expected of you in future chemistry classes. So I don't want to coddle you and say, oh, it's a prep course. You don't have to name it. You don't have to know, distinguish them. But I want you to because I want you to be well prepared for your next chemistry course. So the next two pages go through a lot of nomenclature. Um, and this table would be hard to do in one sitting, I think. I think, you know, do three, four, come back, practice them. You can always come back and review this lecture again um, and fast forward to whatever answer you want. Um, but for me, you know, I've, I've seen this so much that it's just second nature. I want it to become that way for you. I want you to immediately, when you see something that needs to be named, I want you to classify it as ionic or covalent and then name it. Um, because inevitably coming off of covalent nomenclature, you're going to say, oh, that's iron trichloride. It's just like phosphorus trichloride. My professor worked with it in graduate school. No, it's not because this is ionic. It's going to be iron three chloride. So iron three chloride. So with all of these, you're going to, you know, work to classify the type of bond and then name it. So what I don't want you to do with these next two pages is that I don't want you to just listen to this entire lecture and copy these down and not digest it and not practice these because it's very important to practice these. Um, because like I said, on the exam, this is a big part of your grade. In Principles of Chemistry, I know nomenclature comprises at least 30% of your Unit 2 exam. And there are other questions about nomenclature too. So be sure that you're not just copying this down because it's not going to stick if you do it that way. So I'm going to continue going through these and explaining them. Um, I would prefer that before you listen to me do this that you've attempted them. Um, I'll get off my high horse now. Okay, this is ionic, zinc, chloride. Why don't I use a Roman numeral? Because zinc is a transition metal with only one little number. So you don't say zinc 2 chloride. The next one is ionic 2, sodium chloride. The next one's covalent, carbon tetrachloride, ionic. Calcium sulfate. Uh, ammonium sulfate's ionic. It's NH4 to SO4. Um, ionic. Magnesium hydroxide. Next one's covalent, and that's H2O. Hydrogen iodide is covalent, and that's just HI, covalent, phosphorus, tribromide. 
Hmm. Okay, covalent CO2, covalent xenon tetrafluoride, covalent P fat three. That is an angry, angry chemical. I would not recommend working with that. Okay, next one, dinitrogen pentoxide, covalent dinitrogen, so N2O5. Be careful. Remember, with covalent compounds, you do not have to switch. You don't do the cross and raise or the cross and drop. You just list it as they are. Next one, covalent dichlorine heptoxide. Next one, covalent note. A lot of times students will say, this is sulfate ion. I know it is, Professor Clark. You were wrong. It is not sulfate ion, sulfite, sorry, sulfite ion written like this because it has no charge. So this is sulfur trioxide. Okay, the next one's ionic, potassium oxalate. So that's K2, C2O4, ionic iron. Two, dichromate. All right, mercury two carbonate. That would be ionic. So HgCO three covalent hydrogen chloride. Next one covalent silicon tetrachloride. Okay, covalent silicon diiodide. Kind of a weird spelling. Okay, and next page. Sodium sulfide, ionic, and that is Na2S, ionic, barium iodide. Ionic cold three iodide. That's a three. Okay, ionic copper two oxide. Um, ionic magnesium chloride MgCl2. Covalent tetra Porous decoxide. Crazy name. Okay, covalent sulfur hexafluoride. Covalent dichlorine heptoxide Cl2O7. Covalent nitrogen monoxide. Ionic ammonium phosphate, ionic tin two nitrate, covalent hydrogen bromide, covalent boron trifluoride, covalent carbon. Monoxide, covalent SO2, covalent dinitrogen, tetroxide, covalent phosphorus trichloride, ionic plumbic dichromate, um, so ic the higher charge. So this is PV plus 4, Cr2O7, 2 minus. We're going to simplify this, so it's going to be PV, Cr2O7, 2. Ionic, lithium, phosphate, ionic, Na3N, ionic, nickel, Two bicarbonate. All right, so 
That concludes the ionic covalent nomenclature table. If there were some that you missed or some that I missed, be sure to let me know. Um, but practice, practice, practice. You can always print this out again and practice some more. It never hurts to practice this. You can never practice enough. Okay, we have a little bit more nomenclature left. And that is naming acids. Not dropping acids, but naming acids. Um, so there are two types of net acids that we're going to learn how to name. And they're naming binary acids. Are, so two types are binary acids and oxoacids. So I'll give you an example of what a binary acid is. Um, this would be like HCl. And so they're pretty straightforward. You're just going to say hydro and then chloric. So it's hydro plus the name of ion plus ic and then space acid. So this is hydrochloric acid. Now, oxoacids, on the other hand, are ones that contain hydrogen and oxygen. So uh, acids are a source of H plus protons. Um, so what you'll find in common with uh, all the acids that we see is that they have hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Um, so the oxoacids that we're going to learn how to name uh, come from your polyatomic ions. So you have, let's, I'll give you two examples. So HNO2 and HNO3. These are examples of oxoacids. And what you have to do is look at the polyatomic ion from which they come. Ooh, I got Christmas colors going on. Um, so this would be NO2 minus. And so naming acids requires a firm foundation of polyatomic ion nomenclature. So you're probably thinking, she's trying to torture us with polyatomic ions. I'm not. That's just how it is. But makes it so much easier if you know your polyatomic ions. Okay, so this is nitrite ion. Okay, and this guy over here, remember, is nitrate ion. Okay, so with acid, oxoacid nomenclature, it goes it to us and eight to ick. What does that mean? So this is going to be, since it was nitrite, it's going to be nitrous acid. So this is nitrous acid. And this, it was nitrate, it's going to go to ick. So it's nitric acid. Okay. So, now for some practice. All right, so this one, that's one we just did. Look at the polyatomic ion from which it came. So it's NO2 minus, that's nitrite. So this is going to be nitrous. So it might help if you write it to us, eight, to ick, your little cheat sheet. And that's a good thing to put on your the top of your exam. Okay, so this is SO3 2 minus, that's sulfite. So this is gonna be sulfurous acid. CO3 2 minus is carbonate, so that's gonna be carbonic acid. You have that, if you like to drink soda, carbonic acid, that's the carbonation. Is. Okay, this guy is kind of in disguise. C2H2O3 minus is acetate ion. 
So acetate is going to go to ick. So this is acetic acid. And acetic acid is vinegar. Okay, this is your binary acid, so it's just going to be hydrofluoric acid. Okay, Cl2, ClO2, that's chlorite, so it's going to be chlorous acid. This will be, ClO3 will be chloric acid. And NO3 is nitrate, so it's going to be nitric acid. Okay, so my instructions are incorrect. It should be uh, right the following acids. Okay, so phosphoric acid, that is PO4 3 minus, so it's going to be whatever the charge is on that polyatomic ion, that's going to be how many hydrogens you put, so it's going to be H3. PO4. Okay, acetic acid, acetate, so C2H3O2 minus. That will be HC2H3O2 minus. And usually with acids, you write that H plus H first. So even though you have hydrogens and acetic acid, you still write that one H in front. Okay, hydrobromic acid is just going to be H. Br, you're dealing with just Br minus. Sulfurous acid, okay, so look at your cheat sheet. That comes from sulfite. All right, so what is sulfite? I don't know my polyatomic ions. Learn them. Hello, learn them. Okay, H2SO3. Seriously, your next chemistry class will be so much easier if you know your polyatomic ions. And then you'll impress other students in your class too, like, Oh, you know, I just learned these. Just, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, chloric acid. So, ick comes from eight. So, that's going to be chlorate. Remember, chlorate is this guy. So, it's going to be HClO3. And then nitrous comes from nitrite, NO2 minus. So, HNO2. And we're done with unit two. So lots of nomenclature in Unit 2. If I haven't emphasized that enough, um, work on work on your polyatomic ions, work on nomenclature, work on your homework problems. Study, 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 study. Try to make up funny things so you can remember your polyatomic ions. And did I mention that you need to learn your polyatomic ions? Just making sure it's clear. Anyways, that's all for Unit 2. And we'll practice these in class. All right, on to unit three.